Last month, Republican senators unveiled a smaller package on infrastructure, $568 billion bill focused on roads and bridges. Joining me right now is Florida Congresswoman on the Foreign Affairs Committee and Small Business Committee, Maria Elvira Salazar. Great to see you, Congresswoman. Thank you so much for joining us. Your thoughts on all of these spending plans that are going to come, of course, with high tax plans as well. We are looking at taxes going much higher in the year ahead. That's how Hair I feel. Hair on fire? Hair on fire. <laughs> Very concerned. Yeah. Very concerned because, you know, it sounds good. Wonderful to always to see you, Maria. It sounds beautiful. Thank it sounds you. beautiful, but this is not a matter of morality. It's a matter of reality. Socialism is fantastic on theory. It sounds great, but it's miserable in practice. Socialism thinks that government is God. And in reality, we are the owners of our own lives and we create our own destiny. And that's why I'm telling you I'm terrified because, you know, I come, I'm Cuban-American, first generation. I don't have to tell you my parents told me what socialism means. And they say, no, this is not the same socialism as here or there. Socialism is socialism. And President Biden has the opportunity to pick the road after this pandemic, whether you go the socialist way or the free market way. And so far, we have only seen socialism. And you know, it's, those are good plans. Free health care, free child care, that sounds fantastic. But who's going to pay for it? And when you tax people, those decisions have consequences. And that is why I'm terrified. Yeah. Congresswoman, this is just one part of a radical agenda. The other part, of course, is wide open borders. I just got back from the southern border uh, where I witnessed migrants en route to the United States, migrants from Nicaragua, Guatemala, uh, basically being directed by criminal cartels and smugglers who are getting drugs and people across the river into the country uh, through these massive gaps in the border wall. I spoke with former Trump senior advisor Stephen Miller and asked him yesterday to connect the dots from what I saw on the ground to the policy coming out of Washington. Here's what he said about the impact of illegal immigration. Watch. I think the fundamental issue for the country is this. You can either have a large, stable and growing middle class or you can have unending illegal migration. You can't have both. California used to once be the true golden state, the place everyone wanted to be, the place everyone wanted to live, the place where you would go to pursue your middle-class dreams and where you could live, in a very real sense, the American dream. But decades of unending illegal migration shattered that dream. It's not the fault of the illegal immigrants. It's a reality of what happens when you have massive supplies of illegal low-wage labor coming into any one place in a concentrated fashion. It pulls wages down. It deteriorates the middle class. Congressman, what about that? How does Joe Biden and how do Joe Biden and Kamala Harris justify uh, the middle class impact from wide open borders? Well, the problem is that they cannot, they don't have a plan because immigration, and I feel it on my own skin on the floor of the United States Congress, is a very, um, very difficult word to pronounce. No one wants to touch immigration because, unfortunately, you have to make tough choices. But I am a brown girl from the hood. I don't have any problems with bringing a plan, which I did, and I brought it to your show, which is that we have, we got to solve many problems. We have to f solve the asylum process, which is broken. We have to fix the problem with the visas. We need more people coming in to pick up jalapeno peppers or tomatoes in, uh, in Homestead. We have to bring engineers and doctors, and we have to uh, seal the border. And we got to do something with the border, put all the technology so those people that are coming in will come in legally. But unfortunately, yeah. both parties cannot be, have not been able for 35 years, because Reagan was the last guy who gave some type of citizenship, path to citizenship, to 3.5 million Mexicans. It's been 35 years ago. We need to fix it now. I believe that the GOP— well. 
we we are we are we're not the racist party. We are moral. We, we are, no one has the Democrats do not have the compassion on. They don't have the the uh, morality. They are not the moral ones. They don't have the the monopoly on compassion. We are compassionate too. But we yeah. got we got to put some 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 order at the border. But no one wants to talk about it. And unfortunately, the Biden administration, right. Kamala Harris, has not even gone to the southern border to see it for herself. Right. No, she hasn't, and they are all waiting for her. A lot of people told me that on this trip. Uh, we should point out that 162,000 people were apprehended at the border uh, in the month of April, on top of 172,000 in the month of March, and there are 108,000 so-called gotaways. Those are the people who are intentionally evading apprehension. Uh, this is a major crisis, and it continues until something is but done you know, to I stop wanted the flow of people wanting to breach the border illegally. And let me just tell you one more thing, which is something that probably most people do not know. Child sex trafficking. That, those are very heavy, big words. Child sex trafficking. We're yeah. talking about seven, eight, 13 year old. The United States government has become the number one enabler of the child sex traffickers. Mm. And why do I say that? Because since the Border Patrol is so overwhelmed, Maria, they cannot run right. these adults by DNA, that by the F F FBI database, and they cannot do DNA tests. So when the, the the adult shows up with a child, you do not know if it's the father or the trafficker. Could you imagine? So we and then I don't see anyone doing anything. Number one, number two, we the Hispanics in the United States, the largest minority in the country, we are the ones who have the problem. Why? Because we're in the middle. Yeah. We are being we are being kidnapped by two groups: the traffickers and the child sex traffickers, and the Washington politicians that have been promising for 35 years path to citizenship. Oh, the DACA and the Dreamers yep. and the TPS. So it's time. So now the urgency has overshadowed the. Importance. We, the importance is that we got to give some type of dignity, some type of legality to those people mm. who are here, the 11 million people. But now that has been put in the back burner, has been overshadowed by yeah. what's happening at the border. You see, so we're always well, well, in the middle, we the Browns. Yeah. We, we should point out that the U.S. issues one million green cards a year. So we have a structure in place for legal immigration. Unfortunately, right now, these criminal cartels are making $400 million a month uh, by transporting people and drugs across the border and across the very narrow river that separates Texas from Mexico. And they are transporting 2,000 people a day through rafts. It was unbelievable what I was able to witness firsthand. Yes. And of course, I know that this is an issue that you've been on as well, Congressman. We'll keep talking about yes, it. Yes, I have. Maria Alvarez Salazar, good to see you this Thank morning. Thank you, Maria. Thank you so much. My pleasure.